Today, I'll teach you domain and range. The domain of a function is the set of all possible inputs, and we usually represent inputs with x. We can think of it as, what values are we allowed to put in for x? With a function like this one, y equals x, what values are we allowed to put in for x? Well, anything we want, right? x can be 1 or negative 5 or pi, so our domain is the set of all real numbers. What about a function like y equals the square root of x? Now, what's x allowed to be? If x is 0 or greater, we can take the square root of it just fine. But if x is negative, taking the square root of a negative will give us an imaginary answer. So our domain here is the set of all numbers greater than or equal to 0. Here's an easy way to think about it. Suppose the x-axis is a powerful magnet that pulls points straight up or straight down. If you turn that magnet on, which parts of the axis will be covered? That's your domain. Range is pretty much the same thing, but with a couple of small differences. The range of a function is the set of all of its possible outputs, and we usually represent outputs with y. It's like asking, is there some value of x that will give me this answer? So let's take a look at the function y equals x again. Could y be 4? Well, sure, if x was 4. Could y be negative 6? Yeah, if x was negative 6. Again, our range is going to be the set of all real numbers. Now let's take a look at this function, y equals the absolute value of x. Could y be 3? Sure, if x was 3, or negative 3. Could y be 7? Yes. Could y be negative 2? No. There's no x I can put in where taking the absolute value will give me negative 2. So our range here is all values greater than or equal to 0. Another way to think of it, suppose the y-axis was a powerful magnet that pulled points directly left or directly right. If we turn that magnet on, which parts of the axis will be covered? That's your range. That's all for the day. Till next time.